my gas tank. Well, this is a cross section of the gas tank. I traced it off the gas tank. The gas tank's right around the corner. And I put it in the boat. This is the boat it came out of. You've seen the video. It doesn't fit. It, they have these little blocks for it to sit on. I hope all this sh shows up in the camera. And it hits this before it hits the sides. And the slope's not even matching. This is bizarre. And I know that's the original gas tank. I'm the only fool that's been in here doing this. So, to get it off of the center hump, I need to pick it up a little bit. Or I will need to pick it up a little bit. Like something like that. And build these up. And then I'm going to need, it looks like, Two to three inches of foam over the entire thing to set it on you have to you should set it on foam because it holds 82 gallons that's a lot of weight you get in rough seas and you get bouncing you don't want all that weight hitting on just six points you want it spread out so craziness that the tank that came with a manufactured boat of which they made a lot of this was not a one-off boat they made at least a hundred of these the tank don't fit very strange never uh Never ceases to amaze me the corners these people cut. I'm playing with the tank. So I can mark this back bulkhead. Because I want the bulkhead flush with the top of where the tank's going to be. I'm going to cut this here. Cut this here. will be glass to the stringer so whatever water gets on top of the tank will just flow into the bilge and it will also leave a nice raceway for wires and piping or whatever between the tank and the floor pretty good bit so okay so I now I have a better understanding of the fuel tank issue the bottom of the fuel tank is straight well from one end to the other but the boat is not the boat has a sharper entry in the front than the back so it fits differently front and back, but it really doesn't even fit anywhere because it's hitting that pump. So I'm going to glue some little Divinacel pads and I'm going to hand carve all eight of them so they fit the bottom of the tank. I don't think it would be that hard. This stuff carves pretty easy. So anyway, that's what we're going to do. We're going to mix up some thickened resin, a bunch of it, and stick these things down. So I put my eight blocks here and I started sanding them down and I realized they just weren't tall enough so I came back and I added more and now I'm going to sand them to fit the template on both ends and I'm going to put a straight edge across to get these in the middle so I've got my gear on I'm getting ready to get all dusty by grinding this stuff so all the blocks are in and they're carved to fit the tank and they're just foam right now so they sand really easy. I'm going to cover them with glass in a, in a little bit. Fuel tank is in pretty uneventful. It's not that heavy. And just looking at it, it looks like it leans terribly downhill toward the front. And the pickup's on the back. I don't like that. So we're going to investigate this tomorrow. Man, that's like 20 gallons in the bottom of the tank that the pickup probably wouldn't pick up. So, okay, we'll look at this tomorrow. So yesterday afternoon with my neighbor Nick's help, we set the fuel tank up in the boat, set it in a hole. You know, it's kind of wigging out because it looks like it goes so far downhill in the wrong direction. The fuel pickup's down there and it slopes this way is kind of messing with my head but after a little thought and head scratching I realized I'm okay for one thing I've got these stringers running uphill to make sure the front of the boat would drain and even like it is now there's only two inches difference between the tank elevation here and here as far as the stringers go so that means if you look at the bottom of the tank there would only be two inches in this far end before it gets to this end and I did a bunch of math and I figured this area and I multiplied times the length of the boat 
and divided it by two because there'd be half as much fuel on average and I got cubic inches and divided that by 12 by 12 by 12 got a cubic foot times seven and a half gallons per cubic foot and we're talking how many 2.3 gallons here before it gets to here and that's only if the boat is static if you're running it's gonna the front of the boat's gonna come up so I'm okay I don't have a problem I was just messing with myself so it fits on the little stands pretty well so I'm gonna take the tank out and I got a glass the stands down a little better than they are and uh, then I have to decide I wish I knew somebody that knew more about foam I need to get a couple inches of foam under the tank now, I don't know if I pour it down this little scrap crack will it flow all the way I got a big gap at each end I can pour it or do I need to put foam in the bottom and then set the tank on top real quick um, I could use some help with that I think I mixed up a lot of thickened resin and I'm just smoothing all these curves out on these little pads to give the glass halfway good chance of not having a bunch of air under it just uh, kind of smoothing everything out make all the corners rounded So for every hour I've spent applying um, polyester resin and glass cloth, I've probably spent three just getting ready. It's all about, well, it's kind of like painting. It's all about preparation. If you get everything clean and smooth and knock all the little bumps off, the cloth goes on, look, looks like you know what you're doing. If you cut corners and you got a bunch of whiskers and stuff, not so much. I coated my bilges or some of them yesterday with this epoxy paint that I have, my go-to epoxy. And um, I do this for several reasons. <clears throat> One, it just looks a whole lot nicer. Two, it helps me find my bad spots like these these Sharpies right there that would draw blood if you rubbed your hand against them. I can see them better when it's painted because my little eyes. And two, this is laminating resin and it remains a little bit sticky. And it's kind of irritating. I don't know if you can see that. But it stays a little sticky by design so that you can keep putting more layers on and it will chemically bind but it's kind of a pain in one way all the dust sticks to it leaves stick to it. it sticks to your shorts when you sit on it so this epoxy either covers it up and kills it or it cures it one or the other I don't know what but uh it, once you put the epoxy on you can sand it you can do what you want it doesn't stick and I get it free so I'm going to probably end up coating the entire um, bilge before I permanently put the plywood down with this epoxy paint. Right now I'm going to install the rubber pads for the fuel tank and temporarily set the fuel tank in place to get it out of the way. And I ordered my foam this morning so we'll be foaming it in pretty soon. Okay, I've got a quarter inch neoprene rubber. Um, it's screwed to the walls and it's just sitting on the little pads. And I'm going to set the tank in place. It's going to have to come out. It's going to have to come out later when I get my foam. But I'm going to set it in place and run the fuel fill line conduit. So there's two ways to install these big uh, awkward fuel fill hoses. You can just drill holes through the stringers and put the hose in there and glass the floor down. And the next guy that comes along and he needs to change his hose, he just got to cut the floor up. 
or you can put a chase or a conduit or something so I'll put a conduit I'll be able to fish this hose after the fact and if anybody 30 years from now needs to replace it they should not have to cut the floor up should be able to get to everything this will be under the console and there'll be a removable hatch in this wall so, a little extra work but that's okay double checking my measurements to make sure I have bought enough foam before we get started because that would be like a disaster to get this half done I was real anxious doing this kind of like when I when I um, fiberglass the first stringer because I've never done this I don't know how this stuff's gonna react but it turned out to be okay it was not that big a deal um, so if you want to hear a lot of arguments go to the internet and see whether or not you should foam a tank in because there are pro foam guys and there are anti foam guys um, I'm foaming it in because it was originally foamed in um, the boat is designed for the tank to be foamed in the tank is designed to be foamed in and I think these tall skinny stringers with the thin um, glass that was on them when we kind of demoed the boat I think they must have relied on foam for part of the strength because those things are just so tall and skinny so we're going back with foam just like it came out and um, hopefully I'll never have to take this thing out because it'll be a bear using the chart that came with the foam it tells you how many times it expands and doing a little math I figured I needed a full gallon of foam underneath the tank in the middle part so we split it up Debbie's mixing a half a gallon I'm mixing a half a gallon you got like 15 or 20 seconds and it starts acting it starts reacting starts foaming up so you got to mix it really fast and get it where you want it <clears throat> you get the approximate amount of the liquid under the tank and then you set the tank real quick and then you wait it because it'll float up so I got four um, five gallon buckets of liquid on top and a battery and me and my goal was to have the foam do the bottom part out to that bottom edge at least um, it's, 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 it's tough it's guesswork I don't think I can pour it from the edge and have it go all the way under the bottom but I think I can pour it from the edge and just do the edges and that's what we did and it worked out worked out good it's a mess but it worked out good so after the initial foam pour got hard it just takes I don't know five minutes at the most because you can poke it around the edges it gets hard I started mixing four ounces of each uh, of the two components and pouring it down the edge to fill up the edge um, this went good easy it's just really hard to get the quantity right because you can't really see you can't really adjust it much so it's just kind of a crapshoot but um, it cleaned up so easy that in hindsight I shouldn't have been so worried about it should have just poured it let it come up and clean it up after the fact but I it came out pretty close I ended up using two full gallon units and part of a third gallon which is pretty much exactly what I had figured when I ordered it so this is closed cell foam it won't absorb water or it's not supposed to absorb water and it's four pound density it weighs four pounds per cubic feet which is not the lightest you can get and it's not the heaviest you can get but it's recommended for structural things like underneath gas tanks and that's what exactly what I needed it looks like my foam quantity management skills rank right up there with my ability to memorize passwords. Kind of tricky. You have a little dip, you put a little bit in there and it goes crazy. And you can't move it because if you try to like move it when it's bubbling up, it just smears. All the bubbles pop and it's just a big old mess. But I got it all except one little dip at the end and I hate to mix any more for that so we'll just see. So now I need to trim it down and glass the tank to the stringer. So this is a knife blade. It has no teeth and it really worked out really good. I was I didn't want to use a blade with teeth because I didn't want to scratch up the um, fiberglass that's on top of the tank or on the stringer. So this thing pretty much cleaned the foam right off the side and then I did a little sanding after the fact. Thank you. 
I got the tank all cleaned up, got the edges sanded, and I have it cleaned with acetone. So it is time to go cut some glass and glass it into place, hopefully forever. So this foam is also supposed to be impervious to um, polyester resin. And I started rolling the resin on here and I started hearing a snap crackle and pop and went, oh my god, it's all gonna dissolve. But it just uh it just made a little noise. It didn't it didn't dissolve. And it uh it held up okay. So I put three layers of chop mat around the perimeter and this should keep any water from getting um, between the tank and the foam or next to the foam or in the foam or between the foam and the stringer should seal it up because um, if you don't have oxygen and if you don't have water you shouldn't have any corrosion which should make the tank last a long long time so the tank is foamed in place and glassed in place pretty much a done deal I'll put a fresh coat of paint on it and it'll be ready to get covered up although the stringers are not ready for covering they need one more cap and that's the fabric that I have ordered that's not here yet one fuel tank complete foamed in glassed in painted looks very comfortable in there like its own mother has tucked it in for a cold night's sleep <laughs>